Hey everyone, I cannot believe, so I read some of your tests and you guys said you wish that we could learn about the moon. I cannot believe that you guys thought that we would end the earth and space unit without learning about the moon. The moon is too important for us to not talk about it. So that's what we're doing today. All right, so we're going to learn more about the moon. I know you guys have done some reading and you guys read on page 361, the number of satellites or the number of moons in each of the planets in our solar system. But now we're gonna take a closer look at the one moon that the earth has. All right, so Earth has just one moon, unlike Jupiter that has a lot. Earth has one moon, a rocky cratered place, roughly a quarter of the size of Earth and an average of 238, 855,000 miles away. So that's not close, although it looks close. That's pretty far. The moon can be seen with the naked eye most nights as it traces its 27 day orbit around our planet. So what is meant by naked eye? We don't need any special tools such as a telescope to see it. We will be able to see it just like that in plain sight. So I encourage you to actually visit this website to see more about the moon. Pretty interesting website, but I won't click on it right now. All right, so I also heard some of you guys talking about the moon and saying that the moon um, is a luminous object and it gives off light, but this is not true. The moon is not a source of light. The sun is a source of light and gives us light, right? But the moon does not give off light of its own. It seems luminous because it is reflecting the sun's light rays. So it looks like it's giving off light, but it's really reflecting the light from the sun. So this is the sun, this is the moon, and this is earth, this is us. So it looks like it's lighting up, but it is reflecting the light from the sun. So I think by now you guys know why we started off this whole entire unit talking about light because light plays a very important role in the astronomical phenomena. So why does the moon look like its shape is changing? So despite us knowing that the moon is a spherical shape, when we look in the sky, we don't always see a perfect circular looking type of body. And why is this? Can anybody think about why? Well, of course it has something to do with light again, right? All right, so the moon's appearance from Earth, it might look like the moon is changing shape each night from a tiny sliver to a half moon to a full moon and back again. What's actually happening is that from our spot on Earth, we see different parts of the moon lit up by the sun as the moon travels in its orbit. So where did you hear this word orbit before? We were talking about how the planets orbit the sun and the solar system. So it's the path that they travel on, right? And it's elliptical, right? Or sometimes to the naked eye, if we look at it, it looks almost um, circular, but it's elliptical. All right, so that's like a crushed oval, remember? A little squished oval, a squished circle, I should say. So again, here's this website that I'm encouraging you to click on and explore. So as the moon travels around the earth, different parts of it are lit up by the sun. So I'm just repeating that again. And you should look on page 73, 373, I should say. These changes in the moon's appearance from our view on earth are called moon phases. So again, this is what we see from earth, okay? So when we are on earth, if we were somewhere else in outer space, 
you might see things differently, but we're talking about what it looks like from our view down here on Earth. So this graphic shows all eight moon phases we see as the moon makes a complete orbit of Earth about every four weeks. So what is a complete orbit? So that's when it makes one revolution around the Earth. So remember, in the solar system, the planets orbit the sun, right? So they go around the sun. But over here, we are talking about this one moon that we have that orbits Earth. So it talks about eight phases, but if we count here, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine images, but it's still eight phases because over here we have new moon twice because this is when it makes a full orbit, okay? So we have eight different phases, count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so these are the eight different um, images that we see of the moon. All right, so we are talking about the phases of the moon. The variations in the lunar phases, so when you hear the word lunar, what do you think of? You should think of moon, because in French, la lune, right? So moon in French is all of this stuff is Latin based. The variations in the lunar phases is a result from the play of light orchestrated by the different positions of the sun, the earth, and the moon. So remember, the moon is orbiting the earth. So it's going to have different positions, and it's going to have different levels of exposure to the sun, right? Because it's rotating around the earth. So this is the first phase we're talking about, new moon. This is when the moon is situated between the earth and the sun. You cannot see the moon when it's in this position. The moon is still there, but its illuminated half is turned to the sun. So over here, remember, they were talking about the moon is between the earth and the sun. So here's the moon, here's the earth, here's the sun. So this is what the new moon looks like. We can't see it. And why is that? Because we are here on Earth, and these are the sun rays. OK, so what's happening? The side of the moon that we see is not illuminated. No light hits it, so we cannot see it. Right. So that's why the new moon looks like this. Now we move on to the first quarter. After two or three days, the moon appears in the form of a thin, luminous crescent. However, the crescent grows, and after a week, the moon has half its face illuminated. This is the moon's first quarter. All right. So again, after two or three days, the moon appears in the form of a thin luminous crescent. However, this crescent grows. And after a week, the moon has half its face illuminated. So if half its face is illuminated, that must mean that there is some exposure to the sun. And then now we can see the illumination or the reflection of the light onto um, off of the moon, right? So that we can see it. Now, a full moon. What is a full moon? When you guys see a full moon in the sky, we see this perfect circular moon. Now, without reading on, can you figure out why we see this full circular moon? All right, so when do we have the full moon? This is when the moon has completed half its trip around the Earth. It is now opposite the sun in line with the Earth. Its face is completely round and the illuminated part is visible all night. So remember when we looked at the new moon, it was over here, right? And we're on earth and we can't see it because it's illuminated side is facing the sun. Now, when the moon has made its trip halfway around the earth, now we see a full moon because look, the side that we see is now having light Hit, hit it, 
right? So it's being illuminated. The sun rays are lighting up the moon. So that's why we are able to see it. Last quarter. After the full moon, the last quarter of the moon is observed. Okay, so we have this other looking, uh, it's, it looks like, almost like the crescent that we saw in the other one. So it looks like the first quarter, right? So over here, the first quarter, but what do you notice is the difference between the first quarter and the last quarter? So we see it looks like this, right? So it almost looks like a D. And the last quarter looks like a C, okay? So it's different positioning. So when it's made its way around, right? So it's made a full orbit or a full revolution, we have a new moon again. So this is where we started off, right? We, and then we had the first quarter that we talked about and we finally had the full moon. And then we had the last quarter and then a new moon again. So we've made a full orbit. So you'll notice these words here, waxing, crescent, waxing, gibbous, waning gibbous, and waning crescent. We're gonna learn what waxing and waning are. All right, so we're gonna check that out in the next slide, but then again, we are just looking at this idea, what we're talking about again. So what did we say before? When it's the new moon, here we are on earth. Do we see it or do we not? So we do not see the moon because the sun is illuminating the side that we cannot see from earth. Okay, so we have a new moon. When it makes a trip halfway around the earth, now the sun is hitting the moon and we can see it and we have a full moon. That's what we can see, right? It looks like this. So waxing versus waning, what is that? All right, so there are 20, approximately 29.5 days between two new moons. This is a lunar month, okay? So the moon waxes for two weeks passing from the new moon to the full moon, okay? Then the moon wanes over two weeks that follow. So waxing is growing, right? So remember we have the new moon that we cannot see and then it starts growing, 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 growing until we have that full moon that we can see, right? And then after that, it starts decreasing again and starts shrinking. So waxing means the moon is growing. If the moon is getting bright from the right, it is waxing. Waning means the moon is shrinking. If the moon is dark on the right, it is waning. So this is from your textbook. Here is a trick to recognize the phases of the moon. Dog comes, cat goes. Okay, so we're talking about here is the D. When the moon is waxing, it looks like a capital D. So there. So remember, waxing is growing. Right here, this is the first quarter. When it is waning, it looks like the letter C. And this is the last quarter moon. So we're going to look at this stuff again in the next slide, but next we're going to put the image of all the phases so that we can see the, sh the growing and the shrinking. All right, so remember waxing is growing. So over here, remember we can't see the new moon. And then we have waxing. So it's growing. Look at that. This is this tiny crescent and then it's like half of the, it looks like half of a circle and then it starts growing and then it has this full circular look. And then when we get to this area where there's a full moon, what happens? Then it starts shrinking and you can see it starts getting smaller and smaller until we have a new moon again. All right, so this is an interesting image. You follow it like this. So one, that's a new moon, okay? so. The illuminated side is here, 
right? So this is the new moon. This is when the moon is in between the earth and the sun. And what does it look like to us? It looks, we can't see it because it's not on this, we, we are exposed to the side that's not illuminated by the sun. Then we have two, which is the waxing crescent. So what did we say about waxing? That means it's growing, right? So waxing crescent. So what do we see from our perspective on earth? We see this little crescent like this. And as it grows, we have first quarter moon. So to us on earth, when we see it, it looks like a half of a circle, right? And then we have waxing gibbous, right? So remember, we are waxing, we are still growing, right? So it looks like this almost a full circle, but not just yet. And then we have full moon. When do we have a full moon, guys? Well, that's when the moon has made a trip halfway around the earth. So you see it started here, halfway, and it appears like a full circle because the side that we see is being illuminated by the sun's rays. So after the full moon, what starts happening? Is it still growing? Is it still waxing? No, it is waning. So we're here, six, waning gibbous. It is shrinking again. Okay, then we have the last quarter. And when we have the last quarter, again, it looks like this half circle to us on earth. And then we have the waning crescent. And then what happens after the waning crescent? Yes, we're back to a new moon again. So this is just another image that depicts the same thing that we were just talking about but it just looks a little different, okay? So I don't know which image appeals to you most. I think this one's pretty cool because everything is all there and you don't have to go back and forth between the two images, but it's up to you. So we're just gonna watch a quick video. It's the brightest and most noticeable object in the night sky. But if you spend much time observing it, you will see that the moon is never quite the same from one night to the next. The moon has something we call phases, which means that it appears to change shape a little bit every night. To understand why this happens, we need to talk a little bit about the way the Earth and the moon move together in space. The moon orbits around the Earth, much like the Earth orbits around the sun. However, while the Earth takes about 365 days to travel once around the sun, one year, the moon completes its orbit around the Earth in only 29 and a half days, or about one month. That's actually where the idea of months came from, the time it takes for the moon to complete one orbit around the Earth. And the words moon and month come from the same root. Despite how bright it looks in the sky, the moon does not have any light of its own. It only appears to shine brightly in the sky because light from the sun hits it and bounces off. Just like the Earth, the moon has a day side and a night side, with half of it in sunlight and half of it in darkness at any one time. As the moon travels through its orbit around the Earth, that dividing line between day and night, called the terminator, is visible from different angles, giving the impression that different amounts of the moon are lit up on different days. The cycle of lunar phases begins with the new moon. At new moon, the moon appears completely dark because the unlit side is facing the Earth. New moon is the only time in the lunar cycle when a solar eclipse could happen, because it is the only time that the moon is between the sun and the earth. After a few days, once the moon has moved along a little in its orbit, we can begin to see some of the moon's day side from earth. What we see is just a thin slice of light called a crescent. We call it a waxing crescent because waxing means growing. 
the crescent moon will grow a little bit thicker every night until it reaches the next phase, first quarter. The first quarter moon is sometimes called the half moon because it appears to us that half of the moon is illuminated, but it is called first quarter because the moon is one quarter of the way through its cycle. As the days pass, the moon continues to grow, soon entering its next phase, the waxing gibbous. Gibbous means humped or swollen, and again, we call it waxing because it grows thicker every night until it reaches the next phase, the full moon. A full moon is the biggest, brightest, and easiest phase of the moon to see. The moon rises at sunset and is up all night, so if you are outside and the sky is clear, it's hard to miss. The moon is halfway through its orbit around the Earth and is now on the opposite side of the Earth from the sun. During a full moon is the only time that a lunar eclipse can happen because that is the only time that the Earth's shadow could fall on the moon. As the moon continues in its path, it appears to shrink again as we begin to see more and more of its dark side. A few days after the full moon, the moon will be a gibbous again, but this time it's a waning gibbous. Waning means shrinking or getting smaller, and so the moon will be waning for the rest of its orbit. The next phase is another half moon, but this time it's called third quarter, or sometimes last or final quarter, because the moon is three quarters of the way through its orbit. Soon, the half moon shrinks into a waning crescent, which will continue to shrink night after night until it vanishes completely into the next new moon. Big and bright and beautiful, different every night, but repeating the same cycle over and over, the moon is one of the best objects in the sky to observe, especially for someone just getting started. The next time you look up and see the moon in the sky, take a moment and see if you can identify which phase of the moon you're seeing and try to figure out which one will come next. Now that was a great video to summarize what we've been looking at. So now I would like you to read pages 372 to see 373 and that's where they discuss the moon and the phases of the moon. After all of that is done, we will be moving on to be to discuss eclipses. As you see in the video, eclipses involve the moon, so that's going to be our next step. We'll look at eclipses, and then we will look at the last phenomena that we'll be looking at for this section, which is polar, polar auroras. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this intro to the moon, and look, um, and I hope you're looking forward to talking about eclipses. Bye, everyone.